Welcome dear learners. Today we are going to discuss about the disaster risk reduction. So the disaster risk reduction is aimed at preventing new and reducing existing disaster risk and managing the residual risk. Basically the disaster risk uh, reduction is a kind of framework in which various kind of activities are done to reduce the new kind of risks and all already the existing risks and all of which contribute uh, this uh, disaster risk reduction framework they uh, strengthen the resilience that resilience is the the ability of a community on that they can uh, go back to their initial position before the disaster has been <clears throat> strike on the community and therefore to achieve uh, for the sustainable development so sustainable development is also a component of the disaster risk reduction and the concept and the practice of reducing uh, disaster risk uh, through systematic efforts to analyze and to manage the causal factors of disasters including through reduced exposure to hazard lessening the vulnerability hazard basically uh, that uh, depends upon the exposure how much a particular community is exposed to the disasters and then reducing the vulnerability to the people and property and wise management of land that is the proper land use management and uh, the environment and improved preparedness for adverse uh, events so this uh, definition or this uh, concept was given by united nation international strategy for disaster reduction in 2009 so why we are going to discuss about the disaster risk reduction basically disasters cause loss to lots of uh, people and they lead to the casualties human casualties a loss of property and they uh, erase all the social and economical progress that are achieved by the humans still date so the disaster risk reduction should be an important component of uh, particular disaster management cycle so therefore although disaster could be not be totally prevented but their impact should be or could be reduced by certain kind of interventions so basically a disaster risk reduction helps us to uh, identify the vulnerable areas and vulnerable to community uh, communities and the ways how can we protect such kind of communities and uh, <clears throat> we are prepared to set, uh, uh, certain kind of uh, sudden disasters and also the natural disasters uh, that are uh, naturally occurring like floods earthquakes uh, that occur globally regionally and uh, this uh, disaster risk reduction also helps us to re reduce the impacts of such kind of natural hazards and also uh, it can helps us to reduce a vulnerability uh, risk exposure of certain communities so disaster risk reduction is a concept and practice of reducing the disaster risk through the systematic efforts to analyze and reduce the causal factors of a disaster so there are different components of the disaster risk reduction first is mitigation preparation response and recovery so the all disaster risk reduction strategies that have been framed and identified have been grouped in uh, this mitigation uh, preparation response and recovery basically mitigation and preparation uh, they are uh, based on the pre disaster activities and uh, the response and recovery these are the post disaster activities <clears throat> so mitigation is uh, that refers to action take that are to be taken before the occurrence of an event and it is basically mitigation uh, is for the reducing overall risk and impacts it includes vulnerability assessment risk assessment hazard assessment basically mitigation is aimed to reduce the economic losses or uh, somewhat reducing the impact of the disasters by uh, certain kind of intervention that we discussing in the lecture so uh, 
in disaster mitigation for example we go for the reviewing building codes vulnerability analysis updates every year we go for the time to time we go for the vulnerability assessment updates uh, zoning and land use management uh, planning reviewing of building codes regulation safety codes implementing of preventive health measures political interventions and commitment public awareness uh, this all encompasses into the uh, disaster mitigation and there are certain uh, two kinds of the disaster mi mitigation first is structural uh, what kind of structural measures we implement on the ground uh, such as construction projects which reduce the economic and the social impacts for example in case of uh, floods when we are going for the controlling of the floods we need to construct reservoirs water reservoirs dams that reduce the impact of the floods we install wind breaks terracing we do and uh, hazard res uh, resistant buildings uh, for example earthquake resistant buildings we are constructing so another uh, category is non structural measures like policy and practice and raise the awareness of hazard and encourage development uh, to reduce the impact of disaster basically these are the policy intervention that we have to implement on the ground for example, this is the structural measures uh, in which we are using the hazard resistant building in case of earthquakes. So here, here this is uh, the, for example, we go for the diagonal crossing of the steel uh, to the buildings and we install the shock absorbers here and uh, that also reduces the impact of the shocks that are created by the earthquakes or we use the shear walls concrete walls with steel bars so this is a perfect example uh, how <coughs> uh, uh, earthquake resistant building should be constructed and there are various strategies uh, how we go for the disaster mitigation there is bottom up and top down approach so the top-down approach is when the government establishment based mitigation for example some funds are coming from the uh, central government and then they are uh, handed over to the state government or union territories and then to the district level block level so it takes a kind of time uh, from the government to reach to the community that are affected because of the disasters the second is the community based disaster management basically this is uh, what we uh, talk about the preparedness about the disaster of the communities so here the community are enough uh, i mean uh, the well off uh, they can uh, <clears throat> take care of the disasters uh, till the government establishment uh, the kind of relief and response reach to the community so this is also important uh, in case of uh, the disasters so uh, for instance we use different varieties of crops uh, flood prone disaster resistant drought resistant varieties these are also examples of uh, various strategies why we can improve our disaster mitigation so another uh, things that are the investment in the infrastructure support sustainable socio economic development investment in the infrastructure reconstruction and recovery uh, backup generators should be available uh, when the power failures happen because of certain uh, reasons maybe it is the because of the floods or a certain kind of other hazards or backup copy of all critical information like data this is the era of data where data is more uh, valuable than uh, the money so when we have loss of data we lost uh, many uh, kind of informations so the preliminary design should be taken into consideration that prevent hazard and methods to avoid minimize uh, that uh, minimize the effects of <coughs> extreme natural uh, events strengthening the vulnerable areas such as roofs exterior doors windows uh, garage doors basically that areas which are more vulnerable for example in case of the earthquakes uh, the windows are more vulnerable when the earthquake happened the glasses break down so we should take care of such kind of things the second uh, strategy is the the second component is, is the preparedness preparedness is also done before the occurrence of the disaster basically in the pre-disaster there are three activities that are the preparedness mitigation and prevention so the mitigation we had discussed prevention and preparedness uh, what kind of measures by which uh, we are 
prepared for certain kind of uh, the hazards so this is basically done before the disaster so all kind of plan like vulnerability management plans emergency preparedness plan evacuation plan they are all uh, in the, the preparedness so preparedness is uh, preparation of disaster relief plan basically what activities we will do uh, after the disaster and uh, we are ready for such kind of activities for example we construct a temporary shelters we have the provision for the relief uh, we uh, i mean uh, we go for the sensitization sensitization awareness uh, to the people about the disaster so these are all about the i mean <clears throat> various institution and partners that are uh, they, that will uh, who will take part into the disaster so development of early warning system is also a part of preparedness so preparedness uh, also includes preparedness plans emergency exercise and trainings warning system emergency communication systems evacuation plans and training resource inventory uh, of emergency plans and personal and contact list mutual aid agreements public information education these all encompasses the preparedness then the third component is the response so it refers to the activities that are done after the event or a disaster has occurred basically it is the first and uh, foremost activity that we do in case of the disaster i mean in post disaster activity so it uh, is very important for saving the human lives that are at concern and it includes evacuation migration administrating uh, administrating the first aid transportation availability uh, food services i mean the food uh, emergencies are like the food availability medical attention psychological counseling provision of medical health coordination between the various uh, communities uh, that are located at international or national so these are all about the response and it also encompasses the mission of uh, the response phase meet basic needs of the people that i have discussed up earlier so there is growing awareness of cost associated with the improper management of the disaster hence the com uh, communities and the governments are trying hard to improve the first responder efforts so what kind of activities we should do first when the disaster strikes so the disaster response is aimed at providing the instant support to maintain life and health of the affected people so there's a wide array of response activities carried out <clears throat> like first aid transportation shelter food what kind of uh, whatever things that comes in our mind when any kind of disasters happen so for example we have to remove the debris in case of the earthquake happen in a certain community so we have going for the evacuation of uh, the people we have uh, to make an uh, arrangements for the injured peoples to get the medical attention and then uh, then uh, i mean uh, locate locate them to the safer uh, areas in shelters and that is very important so another that is the level and kind of disaster response depending upon the various factors like it is not a response is not uh, same for every kind of disaster but it depends upon what kind of disaster it is how many people are affected what kind of area is affected that all uh, leads to the kind of the different response in different kinds of hazards disasters so it calls for the collaboration coordination communication between the agencies uh, that are involved in the relief and rescue operations so the main uh, objective is to save and protect the human life so another aims of the response are to guarantee of continued existence of maximum number of affected population and ensuring that they are the best possible physical and mental uh, circumstances reinstate the critical services like food clothing and water restoring and replacing the demolished or damaged uh, structure and uh, to make uh, alternative house arrangement like the temporary shelters <clears throat> and uh, to help in relief uh, suffering, uh, suffering and protect uh, health safety uh, of responding uh, personnel so the last component is the recovery recovery is basically a long term 
I mean the phase of this uh, mitigation and uh, sorry of disaster risk reduction it is basically the post disaster uh, action creates emergency relief fund rehabilitate the victims to the safer location a reconstruction of a damaged property like making the arrangements through loans and psychological counseling basically uh, reconstruction and rehabilitation takes a long period of time it may take more than 10 years so it is a long uh, kind of the phase so overall what we have discussed earlier now we can i mean <clears throat> uh, revise it in one picture so this is a kind of community which have certain kind of uh, hazards like the earthquakes uh, so this information we uh, collect what kind of community and what kind of structures uh, they have and what kind of hazard is it is in case of the earthquakes if they don't have the hazard uh, earthquake resistant buildings so naturally we uh, can uh, make an inventory and vulnerability of such kind of uh, areas by uh, risk assessment so risk assessment is based on the natural hazard inventory vulnerability so this gives us an idea whether this risk is an acceptable or non acceptable so acceptable in case of whether if we have good kind of uh, the uh, resistance or resilience towards the hazard so it is a bit uh, acceptable so but if we don't have this acceptable risk in case where we don't have the earthquake uh, resistant buildings so naturally our goal is to disaster resilience so re disaster resilience depends upon the preparedness how much prepared are we towards the earthquake hazard and then <clears throat> what kind of protection measures we have uh, uh, what kind of protection measures we have been uh, installing emergency response uh, teams recovery uh, for example in case of earthquakes so what are the various strategies to strengthen uh, strengthen the drr so first is international efforts so many countries are putting efforts to develop and implement the strategies of DRR. So financial and technical support is very important. So cross-border international uh, like the medical uh, aid, financial aid, technical aid in, kind, uh, in terms of machinery or the medicines that is also important. So second is integration of DRR into national policy. So the political commitment is a key so political commitment is very important what kind of policies and plans have been uh, implemented like in india we have a national uh, <clears throat> disaster management authority which makes all kind of policy and plans that have be to uh, that have to be implemented on a national scale so this integration helps in bringing overall change DRR needs to be integrated in all developmental projects. What kind of projects we make? We should uh, have a one component of DRR. So such inter integration is also necessary to gain the international support and assistance. Many international uh, conferences, organizations also emphasize the integration of DRR and uh, plans into the national policy. Then capacity building, this is very important in case of the preparedness how much prepared our to towards the disasters for example capacity building for a certain kind of the hazards uh, by improving the governance accountability leadership national uh, societies and com communities includes providing educational training skill volunteers and all um, related staffs what kind of uh, the for example we uh, have been introduced a disaster management and as an uh, compulsory skill enhancement course for all kind of streams so this is kind of uh, uh, inculcating the uh, skills into the community particularly in the college uh, or university uh, scholars so besides there are certain challenges also towards the DRR like the effect to an informed uh, disaster information system should be there it needs to be maintained disaster information system this needs to be uniform and scientific and uh, issues like finance technology human resource and effects in the form of such information the second is lack of political commitment and uh, then it is basically what kind of policy and plans we are making so if we have good 
kind of political commitment then definitely we be having the good kind of disaster risk reduction framework but we if we don't have the good uh, political uh, commitment then we are lagging on this part so that that is also an important uh, challenge uh, for the drr and increased risk that rapid unplanning urbanization further increases the risk for example in the earthquake uh, prone areas when we go for the uh, half hazard a kind of uh, construction so it uh, in increases our vulnerability towards the uh, earthquake so unplanned construction towns that is also important population growth and population explosion and then also the pressure on our natural resources that is also uh, a biggest challenge for the dr and resource constraints like uh, or resources that are needed for the i mean the for the drr for example in terms of technical resource financial resource or in terms of the many so it is also a kind of uh, in in advocate institutional frame framework in, in advocate uh, infrastructure that is also a biggest constraint for the drr so there is some kind of uh, um the relation between the development and the disaster so if we uh, go for if we uh, go for this picture when we see that is a negative realm and the positive realm when for example that disaster can set back a development for example there is any kind of developmental work in going going on in certain countries and if there are any kind of disaster happens like floods or earthquakes so uh, either that structure get will get destroyed and we have to divert all funds development funds for the disaster mitigation or uh, disaster uh, response or recovery so it reduces the developmental activities so other can development can increase the vulnerability so what i was saying in earlier slide when we go for unplanned urbanization townships so it increases our vulnerability towards certain hazards so this is a negative kind of realm uh, in which the development can lead to the well uh, increases vulnerability or disasters can set back development so another part of this positive part of this uh, disaster is the development can reduce the vulnerability so if we are going for the construction of dams reservoirs and um, wind breaks so this kind of developmental activities can reduce our vulnerability towards the disasters and certainly this is the positive part of the development Uh, with respect to the disasters and disasters can um, provide developmental opportunities such kind of uh, for example when we have old kind of buildings which normally we cannot dismantle but because of certain disasters maybe it is a earthquake flood or tsunami such kind of structures will get destroyed and we have an opportunity and we have a national and international support for going reconstruction of such such structure so this is also a positive part of disasters <clears throat> so there are uh, developmental initiatives for the countries that face uh, disaster for example partnership uh, between the countries when one or more countries face certain kind of disasters like currently there is a biggest kind of disaster that is the climate change that leads to certain kind other kind of disasters like floods wildfires and uh, drought kind of situation so in such kind of disasters we need an international cooperation like partnership close collaboration among donor governments donors governments communities non governmental organization private sector and universities so so there should be also uh, the flexibility developmental agency must be efficient and flexible adjustable to the local governments or environment capable of adjusting the changes in condition and seizing the opportunities they were raised when they were raised so there should be the uh, selectivity resources uh, are the public assets so must be uh, i mean uh, wisely used for the maximum output 
so other uh, important activities in the disaster risk reduction is the development and testing of warning and regular uh, warning systems so that regularly and planning the measures uh, during the disaster alert period to minimize the potential loss of life and physical damage and to educate and training the officials uh, the population at risk that is basically the these two parts are into the uh, what we say the mitigation and the preparedness and the train the first aid and emergency response established emergency response policy standards like in case of covid-19 uh, organizational arrangements and operational costs to be followed by the emergency workers and other response entities after the disaster so their early warning system may be there or uh, we should go for the training uh, the over uh, i mean the volunteers Uh, staffs uh, medical teams college students for the uh, first aid kind of training when certain kind of disaster at least they can save somebody uh, from that disaster so there are certain recommendations for example policy and planning and capacity building for the disaster management should be there for the dr physical uh, prevention example for the building of sea walls against storm surges or tsunami or there should be an <clears throat> natural coastal ecosystem like we have mangroves kind of uh, plants sea grasses they reduces the impact of the tsunami so or the storm surges in case of the coastal areas so there should be capacity building of institutional and systematic level in disaster preparedness like the national institute of disaster management is doing an excellent job uh, in which they are uh, <clears throat> uh, going for the trainings uh, seminars webinars for the capacity building uh, for the general public and uh, um, this improves our awareness towards certain hazards or disasters and com- continued provision of food potable water and health care so these are the various recommendations so the various stakeholders that take part in this uh, recommendations or disaster that are governmental departments local government communities media personnel educational institutions ngos and they can i mean share various kind of responsibility maybe is the funds sharing the information and volunteering so these are all the recommendations that we can encompass in the disaster risk reduction so also the emergency operational plans uh, that communities uh, can respond to the threats so they should be make flexible and uh, real in potential emergency so these are not uh, initiated by the administrative plan but uh, they are kind of mitigation strategy <clears throat> basically the community based disaster management mitigation so internationally the policy arena for uh, this uh, disaster risk reduction there have been growing calls for the greater clarity about the components of drr and about the indicators of the progress towards a resilience resilience is basically uh what is the ability of the community going back to its initial position before the stra- disaster has struck maybe it is in case of infrastructure livelihood or certain other kind of uh, entities so a challenge that the international community look at the un uh, in a world conference on disaster risk reduction in cob japan 2005 only days after 2004 indian ocean uh, uh, earthquake that causes the tsunami in the indian ocean and the uh, uh, world uh, conference on disaster re- uh, reduction began the process of pushing international agencies and national government beyond the uh, vague of rhetoric of most policy statements that are towards the setting up of the targets and commitments and we are like we have been uh, setting the commitments and targets for the reducing the greenhouse gases in case of climate change so here also we have to set our targets for uh disaster risk reduction it only happened on the day of when there was a devastating earthquake and tsunami in indian ocean in 2004 so there is a, a huago framework uh, that was first uh, set up of in 2005 uh, to 15 and it was uh, the first internationally accepted framework for drr and uh, it is an uh, out uh, it is an ordered sequence of objectives like outcome strategy goals priorities which have five i mean priorities for which attempting capturing main areas of intervention 
so it held it in uh, first session uh, was uh, uh, 5 to 7 june in geneva switzerland and subsequently uh, global pilot forums were held in 2009 2011 2013 in geneva so these were all about how can we improve our disaster DR? And another is Sandai framework. Uh, it is basically the framework for the disaster risk reduction from 2015 to uh, 2030. And it is an international document that was adopted by United Nations member states from 14 to 18 March 2015 at the World Conference of Disaster Risk Reduction in Sandai, uh, Japan, endorsed uh, by the United General Assembly, United Nations General Assembly in 2015. So Sandai uh, document emerged as a three years talks about assisted uh, that United Nations international strategy for the disaster risk reduction uh, during the United Nations members and you and other stakeholders made a call for an improved version of the Huago protocol. So these they meet every year and they are uh, improving their protocol. <clears throat> regarding different kind of disasters that happen every and each and year. So member uh, states also emphasize the need to tackle the disaster risk reduction, climate change when setting about sustainable development goals. So, uh, 17, uh, there are 17 uh, sustainable development goals. So these should be encompassed uh, with the disaster risk reduction, particularly for cons uh, concerning on the insufficient focus on disaster risk reduction, resilience in uh, what was lacking in the millennium development goals that have been incorporated in sustainable development goals. Basically, that is the main objective of this uh, disaster risk reduction in case of Sandai framework. So this was all about the disaster risk reduction. I hope you all enjoy. Thank you.